Right, so I've wanted to do uh, talks about a lot of different subjects and vlogs for quite a while. But with the way things have been going regarding the van, the lorry, the cats and that, obviously my videos have been mainly about that and obviously me breaking down and so on and so forth. Um, yes, I have got spiritual stuff uh, that I could talk about. But I don't want to go there because right now this is about um, cat rather than wild cat, my work persona, my spiritual persona. And um, I thought it may actually be interesting to you um, to learn about uh, the other animals that I've had, kept, raised, loved um, and was a bit of a rebel with. Because um, I, I've, I was always had animals around me whether that be wildlife or pets or I was brought up in the country a uh, very poor family and uh, my escape was to run off into the woods and out in the fields and spend time with the animals and talk to the animals and rescue all like little shrews and mice and birds from the cats and uh, I did all sorts of weird and wonderful things I think I was even my pet rabbit I think I was even like making show jumps up and having it jump over the jumps and um, that was on a harness and uh, yeah I've had some lovely lovely memories of animals I've had and when I was um, in my adulthood and only literally a few years ago now um, free to do what I wanted to do and share my life with animals and be a bit of a rebel and have ones that I've never had before and just basically have a bit of anything and everything. Um, I don't want to sort of do the whole story but I will try to discuss some of the animals I've owned and uh, um, what I've been known for. I did have like, um, I rented a, a space or an industrial uh, place not far from here um, where I am at the moment and had a little port cabin I rented and I was going to turn that into a pet shop or a sorted pet shop and have a sanctuary there as well and have a place where people could come in and spend time with animals um, and get therapy from the animals I'd done pets for therapy um, had all sorts of weird and wonderful animals and pets that I wanted to take out to help people I understand how much therapy they can bring um, I was also very lucky to um, get known within the exotic animal circles and had some wonderful friends within that and um, two of my cats, Rainbow Bentley, Rainbow is dead now, um, Bentley's actually came from um, a wonderful, wonderful lady um, who, uh, who, very famous, she had a lot of her animals used in TV and film and that, I saw a couple of my rabbits and that, um, and her raccoon was actually who, Oreo, Oreo, Sorry, let's start again. The raccoon in the Marvel film, her Oreo raccoon was actually the raccoon they used in the in the Marvel. I think it's a Marvel film, event or something like that. Uh, so it's based on. So when you see the guy out there with the raccoon on his shoulder, uh, that has belonged to my friend at the time, and that's who I got my skunk from, and um, used to meet and spend time with her exotic animals from kinkajous to porcupines and things like that. Um, and I, from then, I got um, a skunk from her, Flora the skunk, um, and that was part of my, um, what I would say, my, my place where people come and sort of view the animals. Um, but I had a lot of break-ins there, so I actually moved my animals from there and found a private allotment, basically it's a, an enclosed place, and uh, decided to have my own little place where I could have all the animals that I ever wanted. Um, and have a bit of an allotment there but with animals on there make a little like sort of jungle safari to walk around where I could keep my animals and then have private people come and spend time with them for therapy or take some of them out to people that was the idea but obviously I must have spent 14 hours a day 16 hours a day caring for those animals and just throwing my whole life into them um, I raised an emu from a, a chick from a neck, a tiny tiny chick and um, that turned into a huge big bird and I think I must have the only trained emu around um, called him Eddie the emu and when I had to um, when my health was bad and I had to move everything on from there it's a different story altogether 
Um, I had to find homes for my animals and, uh, and uh, Eddie was uh, rehomed his wonderful farm and he started laying an egg so Eddie turned into Edwina and there was, um, even he made newspapers um, by escaping and <laughs> it's on the local rag but there's emu running down the street and people at the window saying there's an emu right there um, so we find stories of that I've had raccoon dogs I've had all sorts of chipmunks, sugar gliders, uh, rats, ferrets, um, ponies, um, I don't think I had goats there, I've had goats in my, my family before, I love goats, um, turkeys, geese, chickens, ducks, um, and then some more exotics, say sugar gliders, we had um, ground squirrel, um, I had just about every breed of rabbit going, I went on to show rabbits, angora rabbits again, that's a different story. Um, what else? Crikey. So I'll have to find some pictures of what I've got if I can. I don't know if I can find pictures of them. Um, I have had dogs, I, but I didn't just do normal dogs. I went for a wolf dog and um, husky Malamute and Husky Crusk. Um, and I scootered them and that's for how I ended up getting injured. I got hyperextended knees now because I had an accident with them when I was walking with them. I ended up being airlifted and my legs is why I've put on so much weight since I was in a wheelchair for a year because my knees got buggered over that again another story I'm trying to quickly fly through a few little things um I've had such a, a you know amazing life background and this is just a small part of my life story um but yeah I've, I've just been very blessed and very lucky and basically I, I said if I was going to have one well, I want to be surrounded by animals if I was going to die I was going to be surrounded by all these different animals and just be that rebel and just be with them and love them and I thought um that was going to be the end of my time um but no it didn't I ended up getting very ill um and like I say I had to be home a lot I kept hold of some of my show angoras move them into the bungalow from them i started showing rabbits after all my operations i had to have um i then started uh, breeding all the different colors of angoras and i was the person who actually brought every single color of the angora back into the angora club i hated it because they just wanted white angoras but i was able to breed all these different colors out and i showed them um and then stopped doing that um when the uh um, the virus come in for the rabbits and you had to inject everything I couldn't afford that and I wanted to have a bit of freedom at the point I was gonna move all my hand on my health wasn't great and at that point I had my sticky cat and uh, the two black cats Bentley and Rainbow and uh, I think I had a few sort of um, little kittens come my way as well everybody thought I was like the rescue <laughs> local rescue center and bringing me kittens and that I had a few accidental litters and I did um, have some I just love kittens anyway um, I eventually, uh, I didn't even know the Lake District, District existed and in between all this as I was recovering from my serious operations and that, um, I started talking to somebody and they said where they lived and I ended up driving around the area, finding the Lake District and just completely connected and fell in love. And I'm from Gloucestershire um, and I've sort of been down Cornwall, been everywhere else. And I've always been looking for this place that I've had in my vision of water and trees and lakes and that and I've never found it. And as soon as I found Coniston Water, my God, I was in tears. I completely connected with it. And from then on, I always wanted to sort of travel there and spend time there. And to do so, I had to leave um, my cats behind. Um, now there's two ferals who's coming out the window quite happily so they were fine just leaving biscuits down and they fended for themselves but my sticky cat i could only leave him a few days at a time left food down or somebody come and check on him and i'd go away and i'd come back so um to cut a long story short this is how i got into the recent van life if i had a lot of vans um i wanted to be in a scenario where um I needed a van anyway and a vehicle where I could carry a toilet with me and things like that because of my hidden disabilities, not just my mental health ones and other issues. Um, I wanted to be in a situation where I could go away for a week at a time to go like to Scotland and travel further and things like that. And to do that, then the cats would have to come with me. Now, I wasn't expecting the ferals to, but I was hoping that Sticky would. And as the, the pandemic came and the first lockdown came, that was the opportunity for me to, I'd had different vans, different cars and long story over that, um, I ended up getting my van before, I ended up getting Destiny because I had um, an older horse box and I had a little kangoo car 
and I was off taking her to doing a charity run, taking some clothes and things to a charity for the floods over in Doncaster, and somebody back ended me. And it was, I was ended up being written off, fire engine cutting me out, and all this sort of stuff. Um, got back, hurt my back and everything. And I lost my little vehicle that I used to run up and down to the Lake District with. Um, blue bucket in the back, little camp stove. I kitted her out, little kangaroo, I kitted her out. And I was able to go a few days. So I then um, was scared of being in a car um, and wanted a bigger vehicle. Um, so I wanted to go more to a van. And I um, found Destiny, which is my van before this lorry um, in Hove. I'd travelled to Brighton to pick her up, uh, drove her back, and she just was basic fitted out. And I bodged the rest of it, made a little cat pen in the back, and that's how I managed to then start feeding um, Sticky and the um, ferals, Rainbow and Bentley, in the van. And I'd sleep in her, and I was just so. I, I loved that van. Um, it was very basic, no insulation, no nothing, just bog standard washing up bowl, similar to what I'm doing there in Grace. I've had to start again there, um, just to allow me to sort of get places. And I find it very hard to live in bricks and mortar. I, I like to be um, very much um, amongst nature and doors open to nature and things like that. Um, and I felt very safe, much safer in my van. Um, so during the lockdown, like I said, the, the two years of a uh, the lockdown I've been living in the or sleeping in at least the van and now lorry outside my bungalow because that is where I feel comfortable and also um their destiny was amazing um I after a year I, I found Liam and the support van lifers group um who are obviously supporting mental health people and things like that and uh Again, I didn't. I find it difficult to interact and things, and I just happened to sort of go to him and say, "Could he help insulate?" And then it turned out to me tearing the whole of the back of that van out and saying, "Liam, refurb it. Just do whatever." And so Destiny became Liam's first full van build, and the uh, <laughs> that's cat van. <laughs> <laughs> he will openly say, my God, that was a pain in the ass. But he did a beautiful, beautiful job in it. He made me cry. He made my dreams come true of having this, like, log cabin look inside um, a van. I, I, it was insulated. It was a beautiful bespoke kitchen. Um, lovely cattery that I designed. I designed it all. He made it best he could to it and changed a few things best he could. I carried on with it, ran out of time, ran out of funds and that. I carried on doing a bit of bottled up and making a shop in the back and things like that. And my word, that van was my pride and joy absolutely beautiful I spent a lot of money into it and in it and um i was so so proud when i was out um the cats cats um moved in um it was they traveled lovely in it i was then able to go further afield go out for longer and my world just then opened up i, I get emotional thinking about it i loved I found my passion, I found what I needed um, to be out and to escape and be amongst Mother Nature, be amongst the animals, to be amongst the birds, be amongst everything that I connect with that I needed around me and I still need around me. Anyway, um, so we're going to a bit of a story about the present van life and that. Um, so yes, we had her and then I bought Grace purely because I needed a bigger vehicle, have more cats, I was going to be the Savannahs. Um, on, then decided not to because of the um, the breeding behind mine that I found out about it was not good. Um, so that's why I moved on my beautiful stud cat. He's now with a friend of mine and uh, just um, new to the cats I had and focused on giving them the best life because of their health issues. Um, and this is why we sort of slowly um, moved more on and I was left in this scenario I'm in now. And then, then Grace was bought, like I say, to make a bigger vehicle, a bigger home, a place to carry more cats, take them out on the road, and educate people about the Savannah breed, and also to allow them to have that time in the wilderness to um, allow them to live more naturally, to hunt, to have their freedom, to actually, you know, enjoy life, have a, have a, no matter how short their life was to take that wonderful them into that wonderful world so they could enjoy their freedoms and um, and cherish life um, rather than just be stuck in the bungalow or just stuck in a, a cage or things like that. I wanted my cats that came my way to love life and in alongside that I also uh, needed that time in the wilderness as well. 
and uh, that was what was going this this lorry was going to be a long term project. Um, I had Destiny and Grace paid for on the road for for the year. Um, I also knew that Destiny, even though I'd spent money on her, um, it, it was a year that she was all refitted out. The year of um, Liam doing it. And then um, during her last MOT, I was found out that I'd been conned a little bit about her her quality that she was underneath, and that she wouldn't have lasted much longer um, for going through MOTs and that. So I had this wonderful vehicle um, with all her insides, absolutely beautiful, and it was on a bad shell basically. Um, and then when Grace, uh, those who've been watching my channel, will know that this lorry was parked down the road, down by Tesco's. Um, service entrance so as far as I was concerned it's being watched I checked on it daily um, she was attempted theft after a couple of months they um, couldn't um, they ended up they found the isolator they got in they tried everything to go um, but I had a different switch that um, neutralized the accelerator um, and they didn't find that so obviously they got her started tried to drive off and couldn't fortunately um, uh, but the back end of that was that they then went and smashed all the windscreen. Obviously, they pulled all the wires out to hot wire her. Um, so even though I was very blessed to still have her, I had a lorry that was all destroyed cab. Um, all the ignition and steering car smashed off. Um, windows all smashed. Kids then came later on and smashed all the windows around the outside because I couldn't move it. And they thought it was abandoned, even though, you know, before we'd moved up to here. And uh, I had to basically decide which vehicle I was going to keep. So I couldn't afford both. Um, I had my own debt issues. Um, I was going to use Grace for a work vehicle to, to go from being disabled to a work opportunity. Um, not just take the cats with me to work. So obviously I need to have a, a vehicle that I can work within um, and also re-energising and, you know, work a couple of days of a month and you know take cats with me have a therapy space have a space i could carry a shop with me have a space i can go to festivals and things that i can cope with and um, go to mind body spirit fairs i could cope with um but also in, in beyond that also have time out in the wilderness for the cats to and for me to re-energize and so grace was this huge big future thing for me to basically um start a new life and try to cope with my disabilities in a way that we could. And obviously pandemic stopped a lot of that happening, um, but also this when this um, break-in happened, then my whole world came crashing down, my whole future to get out of debt, that I got into debt over the pandemic time, I've been living off credit cards, um, my disability is a, a, a lessened, um, and I didn't want to fight that, because that to me meant that I was better. Um, so I've just been living off credit cards to make up the deficit for my, my debts and things and got myself in more debt. Anyway, um, Grace, like I said, I had to choose Grace because she was the more uh, stable vehicle and also she was big enough for me and the cats and um, was a future home as well. If I couldn't afford to keep paying for the bungalow, then that was, would have been my choice of home as well. So that was um, February... 2022 that Grace was broken into um, so my van was sold to help um, pay some of the debts and to have a bit of money left over to do some of the repairs on Grace um, I moved we moved the lorry to a summer bungalow with all cab windows smashed ignition could be hot wired any time windows smashed and I basically moved in to protect the lorry I could not lose her Police told me to park her outside my bungalow because they were upset about me um, being down, parked, <laughs> sleeping down outside her, inside her, with all the broken windows and that, and they were feared for my safety and my mental health. So they basically told me to move her outside my bungalow and stay put and leave her there, which is why she's here. And I appreciate the neighbours weren't happy, but, you know, she was moved in. We couldn't move her for ages because she had no ignition. I'm still trying to mend her windows. I've still got broken windows now that are hidden behind perspex and that, and some aren't even mended yet. Um, but anyway... A long story short, where we are at the moment, um, I've had, I've slowly, I slept in Grace with, no, like I say, no heat, no windows, no power, no key, um, moved the cats in with me, it was their permanent home, they've moved in and loved it, 
and obviously being outside the bungalow you know they they got used to being in the garden and living in, in grace and it's been an absolutely amazing space and um liam again did the insulation the back to start with and then i've built on since then and been doing again did the funds we had a little funds um and we've um with the help of um ian uh, igm restorations fabricator has been helping me with some stuff um but basically it's been like a bodgy build like i did with <laughs> <laughs> making do, uh, you know, um, making do. This side's not insulated. The catch room's not insulated. Like I said, I've still got broken windows. We've slowly sort of um, put windows back in, put ignition back in. Um, there's a lot to do, but funds are gone. Um, but the cats were in and happy. I was in happy, and we were rare, waiting to take her out for. We desperately wanted to get to Stratford upon Avon, Overlander show. That was my dream to get there, and I was very fortunate to get her ready for that. What we didn't expect to happen was for my cats to start being ill, having various different things going wrong with them. And um, that was a really emotional time during all this was happening. My cats in my world, especially Connie, who I lost, my, my big feisty girl who, um, and a lot of YouTubers and a lot of the meets I know I would not have been invited to or been able to go to because I had this dangerous cat in their eyes. Uh, and quite rightly so, I understand that. She was my protection cat, and I was live. My, I dedicate my life to make sure these cats had a wonderful time, and um, it's twenty four seven job looking after a cat that was like that, um, making sure people were safe from her exercise and her walking. Around. I was I am covered from head to toe in holes and scratches, but I had a single regret. She, she, I saved her life, and she saved mine many times with my mental health and my depression, and she kept me going, gave me reason to live. So I don't want, don't want to talk too much about her because I get emotional because I miss her like crazy really tough right now but anyway i've had i i've had a lot of animals um but i named myself cat after cats when i was 16 the only thing i ever wanted was a kitten and on my 16th birthday i, I finally had my very first cat and i've had a cat basically ever since even to the point that social services have said that wherever i am because i know i went to move into a house once that didn't allow cats but i even had the social services write a letter saying i need to have a cat wherever i am because they say my life they give me purpose they you know and i did pull my name to cat um and my real name wasn't cat at all i did pull my name in their honor and i've had cats ever since um i've always wanted a savannah could never afford them they're silly money you know thousands of pound and that and i also was concerned that around here that it'd be stolen um when i went out and i for my first trip out in the destiny camper van when i took sticky and the uh, the two ferals with me up to North Yorkshire and the lakes and that. Um, sadly, was on one trip. Um, he did disappear. We pretty much know he was taken by raptors um, because they came back from me. The cats and were dive bombing them. I have videos on YouTube showing that. Um, so, but he disappeared. Just disappeared. So we're pretty sure he was taken. So in the middle of, by Ribble Head, in the middle of the Three Peaks, I have a stone with stick his name on. And I, did a little ceremony there, climbed up the mountains, did ceremony there, and that is my special place that I go every year um, to honour Sticky's memory for July or August or, you know, around that time. And that's where um, the cats that I've lost, obviously Rainbow, I've got her ashes here. Um, she had to be put to sleep after my Scotland and Sky trip. That's also on YouTube. Amazing trip that was. Um, so we had four cats. We had Connie and Mischief on Leeds, two Savannahs, and then Rainbow and Bentley, the two free runners, walking with me all around, you know, everywhere. It was absolutely amazing. Um, absolutely loved that. And um, so she came back and had to be put to sleep. So I have rainbow sashes here from last August, because obviously I only got up July up to this, the Memorial Stone. Um, then Connie, we lost Connie June, sorry, in May, May the 22nd, just gone, um, when she had to fit. Um, and obviously she was obviously going through her, losing her teeth and that and a bad mouth, but she had a fit, which little caveman, her son, watched and went very depressed, very traumatic, and instantly that triggered his uh, loss of his immune system, and that triggered this hidden killer virus, which sadly, um, five days after, um, Connie's lost, then we're, um, I'm told he's terminal. So yeah, so I had a bigger lorry to house and travel, my feline family, and right now um, I've got three lots of ashes here waiting to go up to the memorial stone 
and I don't know if the cats I've got here would have transmitted something, caught it, we've caught it, or whether they're going to be okay. Fingers crossed they'll be okay, but I've <laughs> my heart is just like gone. So, like I said, very, very blessed to have got with all the trauma being through to the Overlander show where Cayman had his final days of watching and having his adventure, which was amazing. I'm so grateful to those who came and gave him the loving and the attention, and you know, and, and donated. I donated for his cremation, um, same as I donated to Connie. I, I can't thank people enough for that. See, I'm now raising the funds to um, get the memorial trip, get the fuel to go up there and have some time out. And um, say goodbye to them. It's been such a um, challenging time, but I'm also very blessed to have had such wonderful, wonderful moments with all my animals. And like I say, I've. I've I'm now going to dedicate, um, in their memory, to uh, when I have ne my next one. It'd be one on one. I'm not going to have any more till I've lost Rich Team. I don't want him to lose her, but um, I will train another one one on one to go walk with me, to go educate, to go to take it from a breeding scenario where they, especially a boy, where they are discarded, they are infertile and go into pet homes when they sh they're not really suitable for pet homes as uh, you just don't know what sort of you're going to get out of the wild bred thing. They're bred down from a serval, so they actually do have wild cutting them, but I'm going to do a different vlog on um, savannas and all that side of things. I just wanted to sort of say that, you know, I've I've had animals in my life. I'm lost without them. I've rescued many, I've bred many again, but for the right reasons. Um, always had homes and I stopped when I didn't have homes for them. Um, that's for the show rabbits and things like that. I've uh, been grateful for the therapy they've given me and the therapy they've given others and the joy they've brought others. And uh, I was always used to call myself an animal whisperer. Um, I know people just seen like cats on my on my um blogs really lately because that's that's who in my life and that's who I connect with so strongly my cats and also it helps that because I have difficulty in my mental health with self care um cats are a bit more independent I've had the dogs they're a bit more independent and uh when I'm having a d bad days they look after me and when I have good days. I look after them and it's, it's amazing and, and they work well with me. Um, I probably always, I, I always will have a cat. Um, they say you either do dogs or cats, well I'm certainly a cat person, but I love all animals. But I've done the other animals, I've done just about every, every other animal out there. I used to break wide and drive horses as well. I've also been seen breaking shire horses, I've taken the ponies um, out of fields and broken them to go into character show and things like that. I've, I've had lots of st I've had so much I could talk about regarding the animal side. Um, but I just wanted to do a quick, a quick, I've been talking for nearly a half hour. So hopefully within this vlog I'll put pictures in and things like that and show you that some of the ones I've had. If I can find the pictures, I don't know if I can find the pictures. I've lost lots of pictures over on Facebook and over the years. I don't have, and in fires and things like that, I don't have a house fire, I mean. I don't have much, um, many pictures at all. So I really want to try and find what I can and put them up here on this vlog. So I've got a record like I have other ones. And then I can tell you about another part of my life. <laughs> anyway, um, I just don't want people to think that I, I'm just a breeder or I haven't rescued or I haven't given homes to things and I haven't dedicated my life to animals. I've, I've, I've even trained I've done. I've tried. I don't matter what. I'm, I'm. I'm waffling too much. I'm going to end this because um, I think half hour is plenty long enough for this vlog, and I hope they'll put some f um, pictures up as well, um, either at the end or during or in a little musical interlude, so you can see um, the wonderful friends that I've shared my life with, and who have helped make me who I am today. I hope you enjoy. Bye for now.
Thank you.